How are you, mate? I've been to see the uh, new Top Gun movie, <laughs> and I have a need, a need to eat tuna, unfriendly dolphin tuna. <laughs> How are you, mate? <laughs> I'm recovering. Queensland <laughs> League scene, we've got plenty for you this week here as the week of Top Gun as we look at the Queensland statewide competitions back soon. All right, the Ice Man's back, I'm here with Goose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go through That's last weekend's round of footy, the Blackhawks, which I'm right into because I've got the uh, the old uh, uh, yeah. mirror glasses. Blackhawks got done by the Hunters, mate. They finally yeah. reduced the PNG boys. Yes, the uh, we mentioned last week on the show, PNG needed to perform on the weekend against the uh, the Blackhawks. Mm. I didn't think they could do it, but geez, they proved me wrong up at Jack Mansky. Yeah, Jack Bansky, they lost their first game of the season, or first couple, and then they were going quite nicely. The Hunters just too good. Seagulls bounce back. Good win, 28 points to nil to the Pride. The Pride, geez, they're unknown entity, but uh, yeah, well done to Tweet. Yeah, well done to Tweet Heads. And as, as I've mentioned before on the show, Tweet Head are a side that have a lot of quality dotted in there, mm. um, but they just haven't produced it on a consistent basis. Big win over the East uh, Brisbane Tigers a couple of weeks ago. And then, of course, this is a pretty resounding win, handing Pride a donut. So, uh, yeah, I think Tweed Heads might hit their strap soon. Yeah, well done, Ben Wolf. Uh, the Winamana Seagulls, 56 points to four in muddy conditions of B&B Cougar I. Oval. Uh, Kalada Saitawa scores a treble. Not unknown for him to cross, especially Darth from Dummy Haas. So, good win there. Yeah, Kalada Saitawa, he's uh, really probably one of the hardest men I've ever had to tackle mm. on the football field. And he's just a handful for everyone. And then you throw in some wet conditions and he's hard to hold up. So, uh, well done to Kalolo and the Seagulls. Yeah, he's one of those uh, hookers that you're replaced by, Trishan Hope. I was lucky to catch up with Trishan Hope to talk about uh, the hookers that have come before him that, are, that have dropped back as well. But he's a through and through Seagulls man. He's come from Redcliffe, I know, mate. Uh, but he's certainly one of the most consistent players in the competition. And uh, here's, um, here's Trishan Hope at home. All right, Tristan Hope, he's from the uh, BMB Winter Manly Seagulls. He joins us. How are you, Tristan? Very well, thanks, Johnny. Good, mate. How's that? Uh, we, we, we launched a new merchandise product for you last year called uh, Tristan Hope Soap on a Rope. How's that going, mate? Is that going out the doors? Oh, yeah. I'm not getting any money in, so it mustn't be going too well. So. No, no. It's not, there's nobody based here. There's a lot of English people live in uh, southeast Queensland. <laughs> but anyway, let's move right along because it has been a bit wet. <laughs> Last weekend, the Ipswich Jets, mate, uh, you, you took them to the cleaners in the mud, uh, speaking in the wet. Um, How did you get through that? That was uh, uh, an interesting game of rugby league. It doesn't rain very often at Cougar, right? Yeah, mate, she's, she was pretty horrendous, to be fair. In the middle of the field there, we're just basically playing in a pig pen. Um, and that's where we seem to be scoring all our points. So maybe if she rains cats and dogs every week, we might be all right. But no, she was pretty horrendous conditions there. Um, there was a game of BRL that actually you called a few years ago, if you remember, and she was pretty flooded there as well. Mm. And um, we got the result on that day too. But yeah, she was pretty wet, mate. And we trained there last night and it was just honestly horrendous, that field. It was mud and slop. So yeah. It usually rains down a Tweed. That game against Tweed, a lot of points scored that one, mate. Uh, I'm not sure if you played in that game, but uh, uh, defence wasn't real good from either side, but you fixed that up the following week. Yeah, no, I wasn't. Um, didn't play that. We've had a little bit of a niggly uh, injury with the knee, but she's all good now. But yeah, um, same sort of thing, mate. We just, yeah, a bit of an up and down season so far. We kind of, you know, knocking off some pretty good teams, and then we um, can't really back it up. So it was good to put a, you know, I think that was our first time this year we put a full performance together. You know, to hold an Ipswich side that can score anywhere around the park, regardless of you know the weather, um, to hold them to four points is um, pretty impressive. It's interesting you say that, Tristan, because the Seagulls haven't hit their straps. There's a lot of players missing from last year. A lot of players called up to the NRL. We're obviously, Jaden Beryl's gone. We see Deloise Hoyter's out. Selman Corvo's gone up. So there's been a lot of changes. You guys haven't quite fine found that uh, mojo yet for the full 80 minutes. You've done it once out of seven games. Yeah, that's right, mate. Like I said, it's been a bit up and down for us, and it makes it hard, too, at times when you kind of get people drop back, you know, Early on, we were getting seven or eight drop back, and then now it's kind of, you know, three or four. Yep. And it does make it hard to kind of gel, but not making excuses either. You know, we haven't hit the mark um, nowhere near where we think we should be um, at the moment. So hopefully that's kind of the win that we needed to kickstart us and get us going and get a bit of momentum um, into the season. Mate, I'm going to give you a pat on the back, mate, because you came to uh, you came to the Seagulls. From, you saw the light. You left that mob up north, um, <laughs> come down here and played the Seagulls. But 
you've you've had Isaac Luke, you've had Jaden Beryl, you've you've stuck with the club. You know, you probably probably make uh, hooker from a lot of other clubs. Jake Turpin comes back, but you keep your chin up. Kololo's an, an outstanding hooker. I'm going to give you a pat on the back, mate, to stick to the club there because there's been a lot of hookers around. Again, we're talking about Taylor Brown. No, but it is interesting <laughs> that you, you you've stuck with the club, mate. And that's a team man, and and, I, and credit to you. Yeah. No, I appreciate that, mate. Oh, like I just love everything about women, like the whole the culture, and you know what Adam Hayman and you know all the coaching staff have done. You know, I it was a pretty easy decision to stay there and the, the playing group that we have, and even a lot of the you know the twenty ones and whatnot to train with us, mate. It's just yeah, I, you know, I obviously enjoyed my time at Redcliffe, but you know, I come over and I've just loved mm. my time at Wyndham, and yeah, like you said, I've had some pretty handy players in front of me, um, but yeah, I've kind of just keep chipping away at it and. Yeah, finding myself in the team uh, every week. So, yeah, I can't complain. Uh, Hook mainly, lock maybe, halves. Is that something you wouldn't mind having a crack at one day? Mate, I reckon I'm a bit of like the Q Cup version of Mitchell Orbison. I reckon I can just get around and just poke around wherever. Um, I'm not yep. going to say too much like that, but I reckon I can do. No, mate, I love to play hooker, obviously. That's my that's my position that I okay. think that I'm um, more suited to. But, yeah, I'm happy to do the team thing, mate. When you've got players like Turpin and that getting dropped back, you kind of got to do what you got to do to be in the team every week. Well, I reckon if you if he comes back, you go up. Oh, well, I'm happy with that. It sounds good to me. <laughs> <You can't, laughs> it's a swap. It's like, uh, yeah, you know, trading spies. But, anyway, this weekend, um, you're up against uh, the Cutters? Yeah, Cutters, McCoy. Cutters, I should say, yeah. yeah They're a good it. side. Um, it's a Friday night game. You, uh, you yeah. just, It's a short turnaround for you. Yeah, short turnaround, mate. And obviously playing in pretty much a heavy 10, actually probably should have been abandoned, to be fair, um, on the weekend there. So we've had a pretty light week, mate. No excuses. We go up there. Mate, they're a bloody good footy side. Um, hmm. Plenty of heart, plenty of energy. They've got good middles. Uh, you know, they've had some pretty decent Cowboys getting dropped back, as in Granville and Condon and the likes. Hmm. So... Mate, they're um they're they're playing good footy, so she's going to be a pretty um pretty good contest up there Friday night. You need to win this game, uh, Tristan, to stay in the top eight. The Cutters need to do exactly the same thing. So there's a lot on the line for both sides. So it should be an absolute cracker. Will be, mate. Like I said, they come with plenty of energy. So mm. you know, just well, I didn't know that. So there you go. So there will be um yeah, be going up there expecting a big one. Maxie Elliott, uh, he must be due to go back in front of the judiciary. It's been a while. Has been a while. He um, got through the VRL game there. And then I, there was a lifting tackle on Saturday. And I think there was a gasp in the crowd. I don't know if it was from Bomber up in the stands or who it was, but there was a bit of a, oh, and I think he even had a bit of a, oh, what do I do here? Do I keep going or what do I do? So, but no, nah, he's been good, mate. He came back with full of energy and um, yeah. he's looked after himself. So he didn't, yeah, didn't look like he going to miss the beat there. So it was good. All right. You have got a great forward pack, but match you love, Henry. The start of the season, just quickly before I finish. It was a pretty much the nucleus of the forward pack that you had apart from Jaden, of course, but the back line was completely unknown. Sammy Scarlett's still there. Now the halves, we've got different players coming into the centres and on the wing. It's a bit of a mix-up as well. So as a ball distributor, are you finding it a little bit more comfortable out wide now with some of those players? Yeah, absolutely, mate. Like we've had, we've, I suppose in the last few weeks, we've kind of had Matty Lyons and, you know, with hopewati has been a permanent fixture in the side yep. as well. And, um, you know, we got Kiko back and, Jaden Sorensen's come into the side as well. Mm. Um, but, mate, they're all kind of – it's just – I feel as though we're just, you know, another win or two away from really kicking into gear. I think, like, that week, you know, the win against Ipswich, um, really going to kick us into gear. And I feel as though I could just see on the weekend that the boys are starting to go, okay, this is what it's all about, you know, right. working what would working out what, what it's all about. So, yeah. All right. Uh, all right, mate. Well, listen, all the best. There's a few games going away. you got to go to, I think, Serena, and I think you've got to go to Harvey Bay. That's a bit of a road trip coming up there. So the songs are going to come thick and par, bring the guitar, the ukulele, the old Scott Morrison, mate. Um, and the moustache is looking very delicious these days, mate. Any chance of shooting a few more movies? Oh, look, I'm not going to say no. Um, if there's a bit of money floating around and anyone's listening, I'm more than happy to do so. Yeah, I'll get around yeah. it. So I'm chasing. All right, mate. Fantastic. We'll find, try and find somebody who's got all their teeth. It'd be great. All right. <laughs> all the best and good luck Let on the weekend. Mate. It's going to be a tough game against the Cubs. And we appreciate your time on Queensland League scene, man. No dramas. Cheers, Johnny. Thanks, mate. Bye. Bye. Yeah, really good to hear from Tristan Hope. And now he's going over there at the Women Manly Seagulls. 
Uh, what a great player Tristan Hope is. And an even better bloke. Uh, let me tell you, Tristan Hope is one of the hardest trainers there is out there mm. on the paddock. And uh, he's one of the better blokes that I've ever played football with as well. So nice to hear from Hopey. Yeah, all right. So, uh, yeah, they've got a, a collision this weekend. Devils up against the Capra, 17 points to 12 here. Field goals seem to be popping up left, right and centre here for the Devils when they're, when they're either playing against someone or themselves. Yeah, they love it. They love yeah. the field goal of the Devils and uh, they, they certainly love to kick them. But uh, what a top of the table clash between the Devils and the Capras. Um, two sides that we know will probably feature heavily mm. in this year's semi-final series. Um, bit of a preview there, 17-12 down there at Bishop Park. Happy days, 32 points to nil. Uh, the Dolphins have the Magpies. The Magpies are weak or two weeks before, getting rolling winner Manly at Cougar mm. right? And then all of a sudden the Dolphins come out and rumour has it that, that Asada stormed the dressing rooms of, uh, <laughs> of the Dolphins to come up with that result, but well done to, uh, to the Finns. Mate, they had it there. I spoke to Carlo last week yeah. and he said it's boiling, it's coming. Cody Hunter, the new player that's come in in the halves with Bryce Donovan, forming a connection. There's things happening in the peninsula. I won't be surprised if they go back to back this weekend. And surprise, surprise, I'm tipping them. Are you being premature again? <laughs> uh, the Bears <laughs> remain at the top of the table, 28 points to eight over the Cutters, and that's not any mean feat. The Cutters are a quality side. They just seem to struggle away from home. At home, they seem to have a fortress, but Pizzy Park is a fortress for the Bears. Yeah, the Bears are really strong again this year, and uh, they'll, they'll be up there as well. But the Cutters, a bit of a, a turbulent season, mm. I can say. They're up and down, a bit like a yo-yo, and they'll need to find some form soon if they want to be inside the top eight. The two affiliated Melbourne sides, the Storm, and, sorry, for the Storm, the Falcons and the Tigers, 22 points to 14. Uh, the Falcons remain near top of the table as well. The Tigers just starting to drift down a little bit here, so uh, a little bit of a concern there, but it's a quality side, the Falcons. Yeah, well, that's two on the trot for the Tigers. Uh, the first one coming at the hands of the Cutters a couple of weeks ago. They had the bye, and then, of course, going down to the Sunshine Coast Falcons. I think the Falcons... Loss isn't too much of a... It's not a bad loss. I mean, they are a top-of-the-table side, the Falcons, and uh, they're both Storm affiliates. So they wouldn't be too upset with that loss, but I think the Cutters' loss really compounds it, makes it worse. I did catch up with Jaden Nicarima to talk about this loss, his life at the Brisbane Tigers and the Melbourne Storm, and uh, here's what he had to say. What a special treat for the viewers of Queensland League scene. The Schnackarima, Jaden Nicarima. How are you, mate? <laughs> yeah, good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. The uh, current Brisbane Tigers and Melbourne Storm 5'8". How's, uh, how's life down there in Melbourne, but then, of course, over there at uh, Morningside? Mate, I tell you what, it's, um, it's been a bit of a shock. Uh, obviously, it was my first year back in, in an NRL system, so um, to do it with the Storm, um, yeah, the first couple of weeks of preseason, I sort of got found out, but... Um, no, nah, I'm enjoying my time here. they got a good connection with um, their affiliates, um, being the East Tigers and the, the Sunshine Coast Falcons. And, um, yeah, lucky enough to be affiliated to the Tigers. And we got off to a good start, but we're, we're currently coming off the back of two losses. So hopefully we can, uh, yeah, turn the table around this weekend. Well, listen, mate, I asked the questions around here, right? So, like, I was going to get to the two losses, but can you just give me a chance to warm into it? Yeah, sorry, mate. Is that all right? <laughs> this is cool. Are you got to... But for now, we'll just... I'll lead the dance, hey? Yeah, I'll leave, I'll leave it up to you, mate. All right, thank you. Cheers, appreciate that. <laughs> so, uh, mate, flying high start to the season. Um, and then, of course, the last two weeks, you've had a bit of a turn and lost two on the trot. What, uh, what, what's going on in the uh, Brisbane Tigers camp, mate? Is there anything in particular happening or, um, you know, you're, you're flying high, looking like one of the best in the comp and then you, you drop two? Yeah, um, we always knew it was going to be like a bit of a shaky start with um, sort of some of the, the East boys that are living in Melbourne um, coming down to, to join the Tigers boys. And um, like we've only had one or two training sessions together as a team um, being the captain's run too, which is, is pretty light. So, um, yeah, not using them in, as an excuse. I think just the last couple of weeks we just have been executed um, properly. And, um, yeah, you can put it down to combinations. You can put it down to um, f fatigue. I think the the game on the weekend, um, there's one of the, the most high level games I've been involved in. It was um, sort of back and forth and, I don't. I can't remember having a break too often, especially in that second half. So, um, yeah, 
I guess that's footy. And if, if we want to be there come October, then we're going to have to ice them games too. But um, I was telling the boys after the game, they're the kind of games you want to, you're playing during the year. Because if you're not playing them sort of footy, then um, it's sort of not going to prepare you for them games come September, October. So um, a lot of lessons to come out of that. Uh, but we've got heaps, heaps to work on, especially uh, with our D. Yeah, we are. Uh, we had a look at your D last week on Queensland League scene and just noticed that once you got some back-to-back sets, you sort of um, broke the dam, I guess, and it was a bit hard for you guys to defend your line. Um, I get that comes from that that incohesion and not having many sessions together, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess um, a bit of that, and um, I guess for us, I don't want to get too many secrets away, but we've got a we've got a pretty um, big forward back too, um, not as mobile as as other teams too. So um, I guess if yeah, teams do sort of get in that grind with us, um, they might be able to win it there. But um, hopefully, off the back of mine and Desi's kicking game um, or improved kicking game, we can. And um, sort of help our middles out a bit because we've been pretty rubbish the last six weeks, oh, the last two weeks in particular. Well, mate, it's not all doom and gloom over there at Langlands. It's uh, it's going pretty good. I mean, you you had an undefeated run start to the season before these two games, um, so it's not all that bad. Now you do have, as you mentioned, a large forward pack. Um, the return of George Fye has been a big story uh, this season, of course, with your side. Um, and how's he combining with Wesley Lolo? I know. Wes has a background playing on the edge, but he's shifted into the front row permanently and he's he's looking a treat too. So how good is it playing off the back of those two blocks? Yeah, it's unreal. Eh? Their, um, their leg speed is just second. And I think if you watch the game on the weekend, George actually chased down one of the Sunny Coast wingers. So um, he might actually get a start in the centres with uh, old Billy being out, I think. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's it's unreal. They, they create a lot of momentum in the ruck for us. And then it's good to to play off the back of them, especially being a running half too. So, yeah, you mentioned George Fye chasing down a wing. He must have some pretty good speed off the mark. I'll, I'll try to rack my brain and think of another front rower that was just the quickest in his club in over twenty. I'll think. Um, oh, it was me. Sorry, <laughs> that's, that's all right. Sorry, don't. No. Oh, we'll, we'll move on. We'll move on. Uh, so you mentioned you mentioned Darren Nichols, um, Desi. How, like he's got that permanent connection there at the Brisbane Tigers. He's a really experienced half, has that NRL experience under his belt. How uh, how good's he been for that combination? How much easier does it make your job as a running 5'8 once you come in and you know you've got a conductor like Desi already in the side, already ready to go? Yeah, it's good for sort of both parties too. Um, obviously, the boys that have done the preseason at East, they're, they're familiar with Desi's voice. And then for me, he just organises and then um, I just have to organise either my left or right edge and then, yeah, just think run first. So it's been unreal. I um, I was at Bronx with Desi actually for, for a year and a bit too and we um, we played in the Gades against the NRL team. So it's good to be back in his company. He's a bit of a legend, um, not just at East, but sort of around the, the Queensland rugby league community too. So, no, yeah, it's been good. But I've, I've, I've upgraded from Cameron Cullen, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, speaking of Cameron Cullen, Darren Nichols, a couple of blokes who just have not ever gotten dirty playing football. They just play in a dinner <laughs> suit and, uh, yeah. Play in a dinner different. suit, eh? If, you, if, you have, if they have raffled their jerseys off after a game, you, you'd have to pay an extra $1,000 more because there's just not a grass stain on it. It's pristine condition. <laughs> but uh, they've made about four tackles between them. Uh, but uh, anyway. We'll, we'll, Teachers' pets. Oh, 100 percent. And that Darren, Darren and Cameron both have those traits for sure. Teachers pets, absolutely. <laughs> um, both of them teachers pets to Tamogi, actually. Anyway, we've got, we're going down a rabbit hole here. Um, so, mate, Jaden, <laughs> we've talked about football. Um, you know, obviously you're trying to get that gig in with Melbourne. It's inching closer and closer to your NRL dream coming back. I know you do a lot on the side as well. You have a very uh, vested interest um, in kids' development, youth development. Um, talk to us through that and how's that tracking along at the moment? Yeah, during COVID, we started a thing called Bro Camp. Um, and it sort of runs off the back of a, a camp that Glenn Azar ran um, to sort of help me. Um, yeah, God be onto, onto the right path. So we sort of mirrored that um, and we started targeting sort of the ages between 11 to 17 year olds. Um, I guess that's sort of when you start to mature, um, you're sort of in and around high school. Uh, that crowd too, when you start to develop different changes in your life or the most changes in your life too. So um, 
being in Melbourne, I've sort of stepped back from that. Uh, but over the last week, I've started to reach out to a few sort of youth youth programs here in Melbourne. And then I wanted to associate myself with the um, autism school as well, being as um, Glenn's son, Christian, he has autism and it sort of reminds me a bit of home as well. So um, I went and visited a school there just to see what sort of stuff I can do um, to help them out. So we've got a few things um, in the works that we're going to start doing to have an alignment with um, the storm as well. So, um, yeah, I've got a few projects. I'm very passionate about helping our youth and trying to provide them hope, um, but also, yeah, trying to get into helping with, like, disability support work and then, yeah, autism because it's, um, it's, it's pretty close to home for me. Yeah, well, Jaden, it's uh, it's been a, I guess, a pleasure um, playing and, and training and being around you during that whole transitional period. And uh, to see where you're at now, it's uh, it's a credit to yourself, mate. You've put in a lot of hard work, and um, you deserve all the accolades. And uh, you're certainly keeping uh, keeping yourself true and uh, going to those schools and uh, doing the right thing by all the people in that community. So, thank you for your time, Jaden. We appreciate it. Uh, big supporter of you here on Queensland League scene. Uh, good luck. For the Tigers this week, and if that storm debut happens to pop up, uh, go hard. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it, TV. Jaden Nick and Ream, one of the many stars of the Tigers. They'll bounce back. He is, mate, and uh, any side with the quality of Nick Arima, Nichols, uh, Pello, and Beal, they they're going to bounce back. That's for sure. Probably one of the best looking back lines too. Physically, they're just yeah, immaculate. Jaden Nick is not that good looking. I used to call him uh, uh, what's he got? Mortgage eyes. One, one fixed, one variable. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the uh, BMB Premiership. There's the ladder. There's the last round of the competition, seven rounds in this one. Capra's on top, Bears and Stars. Those three sides will play in semi-finals. Now, Seagulls, Tigers and Panthers can all make the top four, Taylor. And unfortunately, the Magpies and Seagulls are out of it. But this weekend's game between the Winter Manly and the Panthers is very crucial. Oh, it's a juicy matchup yep. down there. And I really can't wait to see what the BMD Premiership has in store for us, not only this weekend, but into the final series, because there is just some quality players all across the park, and I believe you caught up with one just uh, the other day. Yeah, from the Capras, Mariah Torch, uh, Storch, I should say. She's in the back line there. She's the captain of the Capra side, and here's what uh, Mariah thinks about the rest of the season and what's happened already in six rounds. All right, the Capras, round seven comes up this weekend. They're undefeated. Their captain, Mariah Source, talks to me now live from home. Hey, what a great start to the year, six from six. Yeah, it has been a good uh, start to the year. Um, you know, our team's just sort of really come together this year. And, um, yeah, I suppose just every week we seem to get the lollies. So um, mm. we just need to keep working towards that, I suppose, for, for, the, for the main end of the year, really. Let's go back to pre-season before the start of this whole competition. It was going to be seven rounds for mine, way too short. But obviously you had to hit the ground running and you did that. How was pre-season, Mariah, with uh, girls coming in from all parts of the planet? Yeah, it was really good. We had, um, I think we had three sessions together um, where we come together in Rocky, uh, obviously the home of the Capras. Um, and we had a weekend or three weekends, uh, you know, people from Longridge, Moranbar, and then yeah. people from Sunny Coast come down to get together. And um, I think just just having those sessions together and being able to bond with everyone and connect and, you know, sort of know what everyone's gone through to um, to be there and to be able to play for the Capras, it was it was great. And it just it started off on a good foot and uh, obviously it went through the season. Yeah, I think you played the Panthers first up at home. That was a, a good hit out against a side that's been in this competition for many years. Yeah, yeah, it was. And like they've won a premiership with um down at SEQ as well. And yep. you know, they were they were a pretty big feat and that game probably could have went um one of two ways, but obviously um, you know, it, it landed in our favour with, you know, Emma Packy sort of um taking the spotlight at the end there with the try. So um but yeah, it was good. It was a good start. The you don't I think the season the semifinals go one V four and two V three. So at the moment yep. If you continue on your path as minor premiers, uh, you don't know who your opponent's going to be. I know you don't want to look that far ahead, but that's how good this competition's been, isn't it, Mariah, that we, we still don't know who the top four are? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I suppose it'll all come down to this weekend. For for the top four, like there's there's a lot of um, teams that are sitting uh, on four points and, you know, the, this weekend will be 
whether it makes or breaks them. You're playing the Burley Bears who've won 75,000 premierships, <laughs> right? <laughs> they've, they've, got some, they've got some quality players there. Uh, and, look, you're up against Burley. And you are at home. This will see where you're at, um, and it'll be a really good hit out before finals. Yeah, it definitely will. Like um, the last time we versed them uh, last year, we came up against them down in Burley, and it, it, it probably wasn't the greatest um, start we had. But um, yeah, it's going to be a big, a big test um, considering the the caliber of players they've got there and their form leading into these games has been pretty good too. The last the last couple of games, so. Um, it'll be a good test, but um, I'm sure that we're all up for the challenge for it. That's for sure. There's um, the back line. I'm just looking at for the Burley Bears at your back line as well, which you're a, a part of. With obviously uh, um, you're on the forwards, but their back line and your back line. I know the the muscles got to be have to, have to win up the front, but there's so much talent out wide from both sides. This could be a very high scoring match if it stays dry. Yeah, it definitely could be. Um... Yeah, there's, we've got a lot of speed um, in both in both teams and, and a lot of skill. So uh, if it does stay dry, but I, I hear that they're predicting a, a <laughs> bit of rain over the weekend. So, mm. um, you know, likely we might get some, but hopefully the quality of game is still the same, you know, in, and it doesn't change even if it is a bit wet or dewy or um, hopefully it, it'll still say the same. We'll be able to get the same result. I'm, and I'm also looking at the, there's some plays, Salicia, uh Talisha uh, Harden, you'll probably come up against her on the weekend um, in some uh, in in pleasantries on the field, but you should be uh, daunted by the Bears because you've got so much talent in your squad as well. They they might be as many NRLW players or, or Origin players, but you've got this ticker that the Capra's got. They've got it in the men's as well. Uh, they're going yeah. along quite nicely, but to come up against Talisha Harden, you must be try and stop me, sort of mentality. Let me out there. Let me have a go. Yeah. Yeah, pretty well. I, I've played. I've played with uh, with both Felicia and um, Tasman. You know, they've, yeah. they're both playing back row for for the Bronx, and you sort of you you know what to expect at the same time, but you don't want to, um, I suppose, go out too strong. You just want yeah. to, you know, compose yourself and and play our game. And I think if we play our game together, um, you know, it'll go a long way for us into you know getting the lollies at the end of the day. Mm. Mate, you've scored some tries. Um, you've scored one. some. Uh, <laughs> hey, I said I've scored one try. <laughs> <laughs> or try, I should say. Um, you yeah. wouldn't like it. You you wouldn't mind getting a, a, another one uh, this weekend. Maybe running around Karina Brown or something like that. Karina's a, a good friend of the shows. Uh, but uh, there's also some talent that, that you'd like to sort of um, put on the park against uh, this back line, mate. With yeah. the tries. Uh, is there anybody in the four packers yet to score a try? Then a bit of strife. Um, yeah, I think uh, Tyler Mitchell. I think she's one yet to score a try. Um, I think I think just about nearly everyone else in our side, other than maybe uh, maybe a center that hasn't scored a try. But um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I suppose we'll wait and see what happens this weekend if it's a high scoring game like we're predicting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you want to uh, if you get over the line, you've already scored. You try maybe put that pass to her so she gets off the nudie run. See yeah, you go with that one. So, definitely. all right, you, yeah, it's um, uh, it's four p.m. It's at home. There's the the men are afterwards as well. Four p.m. at yeah. uh, um, at Mackendo Park. Now, have you played there before? Yeah, yeah, I have because I'm a, I'm from out here at Blackwater, so um, yep. you know, I'm only forty five minutes from Emerald, and um, yeah, so I've played there a few times. It's a pretty good field to play on. You know, it's um. It's a little bit heavy, but it's still it's still pretty pretty hard underneath. So okay. um, for them faster girls, it'll make them look extra fast, and for us slow girls, it might look a, a little bit faster. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's yeah. probably maybe to your advantage. The Bears have got to do a little bit of travelling to get to Emerald, so uh, all the best. But yeah. listen, congratulations on a great year. You you know you you don't want to uh, lose one before the final, and obviously uh, you, you you like to try and really test yourself against the Burley Bears. There's a good chance you'll come up against them again. Uh, Mariah, congratulations to you uh, as skipper this year. The minor premiership is yours if you want it, and uh, we look forward to, uh, look forward to seeing you uh, progressing in the finals and all the best, eh? Yeah, thank you very much. That's right. I'll let you go and feed that dog. Yeah, he's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> They're always hungry. They're like children. But anyway, good on you, Mariah. Thanks for your yeah. time. Mariah Storch, one of the superstars of the season. This weekend, as I said, it's the last round. Um, Tigers are up against the uh, All-Stars, Gold-Stars. 
You've caught a few games this, mate. We're going to get your tips quickly for this last round. Tigers against the Stars. Can they stay in the top four, the Tigers? Look, I think it's going to be a really tough uphill battle for the Tigers to go up against the Stars and get that win. But anything can happen with a season on the line, John. Uh, we know the Stars are already pretty much locked into the finals. They may be resting a few players. If they're ever going to beat the Stars, it's right now. Capras... One, Bears two, top of the table clash. This may be a prelude to the grand final, but that's preempting a little bit. Capras or the Bears, this is up at uh, Mackenzie Park at Emerald. Yeah, salivating clash down here, up, up there at Emerald. Um, and I, I like the way the Bears play football, but Capras, they're just so expansive. Mm. They've got really good weapons across the whole park, and I think they'll be too strong for the Bears, but... Uh, we all know the problems with going through the season undefeated like the Capras have. Yeah. It can cause issues come finals. Too. Yep, yeah. So, uh, Panthers now. This is a juicy little matchup here. This is a Frank Lynn Oval there at Mitchelton. Sixth versus fourth. If the Panthers win, they'll go up to six points and the Seagulls will remain on six points. There's a four, four and against of 23 points. Mm -hmm. So the Panthers need to win by 24 uh, to pip the Seagulls and move into semi-finals contention. Remembering the Panthers, the only side to beat the Burley Bears in the last 3,000 years at a grand final. Yeah, well, uh, let me tell you something right now. If anyone's going to put 24 points on the winner Manly Seagulls, it is the West Brisbane Panthers. They play a really good style of football, I think, with Sheedy leading in there mm. and Green at fullback. Uh, Robinson, of course, yeah. in the centres are at fullback. They have a really attack-heavy side. I think they can get it done. However, Winner Manly actually play a lot like the male sides and their other counterparts. They're very defence orientated. So yeah. it's going to be certainly a big clash. Um, and I think this will be the one to watch this weekend. What do you got? Look, with everything on the line, you like to think the Panthers will get there. But I think Winner, uh, defence is just defence wins. Defence wins games, mm. defence wins competitions, and they've had that defensive structures all year. Yeah, and the Panthers, I think for the Panthers, uh, they've been there before. They know what semi-final foot is like. I think they might just get out there. Craig Green's been there for a long, long time. Ronnie Troutman obviously coached the BRL three, uh, two grand finals as well, so he's a two quality coaches there. Mm. But I think the Panthers may be just a ton. They'll get a big following down there. And the other game there, the bottom of the ladder there between the Magpies and the Seagulls, uh, I think the Magpies might finish the season with a win. Yeah, I do. I think the Magpies... Um, a, a very strong side, and uh, they've got a couple of classic players there that we just love watch playing football. So I think uh, the Magpies will get the job done against the Seagulls. Of course, we would be remiss to finish the show without wrapping up the Host Plus Cup and having a look at the preview for this weekend's matches. Uh, John, take us through the roll. All right, well, for uh, again, for the second time this season, it's a Friday night game. The Cutters are going to take on uh, Winter Manly Seagulls up there at BB Prince Stadium. Um, Cutters at home. Against the Seagulls, who are in sixth spot? Yeah, I'm a bit up in the air about this game. I think it's going to be a really tough slog fest, and I think Mackay at home may just get the chocolates done. I'm going to back Mackay this weekend. I think the Seagulls are starting to hum along nicely, and I think uh, they will just get the win against the Cubs. This will be a close game. There might be a field goal in this one, but I'm going to go for the Seagulls. A Hunter's big win last week against, uh, against the um, Blackhawks. Can they take the Dolphins out of their comfort zone with a win at uh, Rycroft. Yeah, look, this is going to be a tough battle for the Dolphins. Can they back up that strong, confident win against the Magpies? I guess with the Dolphins, they came up against the Magpies. They have a really big forward pack. Hunters are known for their physicality as well. Maybe a similar game plan. So I'm going to back the Dolphins. Um, it's an interesting game because both sides have producing when you at least expect it. And uh, it's just this inconsistency has them at 11th and 10th. Oh, I'm gonna to stick to the Hunters to go back to back on this one, mate. I apologize, uh, no, I don't, Hunters. <laughs> the Jets and the Blackhawks, 14th versus 7th. The Blackhawks need to bounce back after a, a big loss last week to the Hunters and the Jets, well, they got done by 50 last week. Yeah, well, I think uh, we uh, might see the Jets just come from behind and get a sneaky win here. I caught up with Reese Jacks to have a conversation about their season and how hard they're working to turn it around. I'm going to back the Jets, and here's my conversation with Reese. Yes, as mentioned, joined by the hooker for the Ipswich Jets, Reese Jacks. Reese, how are you, mate? Yeah, mate, going good, thank you. It's uh, been a bit of a tough old season down there at Ipswich. Uh, how, how have you found uh, the love at Ipswich, mate? How have you found your season so far? Yeah, it definitely has been uh, a tough start to the year for us, obviously. In terms of um, how the wins haven't come too easily for us, but um, I don't know. It's a, it's a really young team, so I guess with that comes a bit more positivity. Um, they're definitely very optimistic, and yeah, we just got to keep training hard, and hopefully things will turn. Yeah, we spoke to Nat Neal earlier in the season, and he did mention 
There are some younger players in the squad, some young guys coming through that may need a little bit of experience before they really click into gear. Um, have you found, you've obviously found that same experience. Which young guys do you think are really close to finding their feet and going to hit some good form? Yeah, it definitely is. I think me and Nat are the oldest in the team by a long way. I don't even know what would be closest to us. I think maybe 24, something like that. Um, yeah, there's definitely a few young guys that have huge potential, but just have to get some gains in the Q Cup. Um, I, I just off the top of my head, like guys like Tyler Coburn, he's probably yeah. like, he's a bit more of an older statesman. He's only, I think, 21 or 22. He's been, he's been out for a little bit, but he's played the last two games and he definitely, we've definitely missed him. He's been really good, especially uh, defensively. And guys like uh, Blake Lenahan, um, he's been going really well as well at, in the front row. And then when someone like Jerome Burns, hopefully he's back soon for us. He's only played the first game. He's got a heap of um, talent we saw last year. Um, yeah, we're desperate to get someone like him back. Yeah, so uh, you've obviously had a couple of really tough losses, but some really close games as well. You pushed North Devils all the way um, a couple of rounds ago. Um, it, you've had some really tight games against some top sides. Also, a narrow loss to the Capras as well, who have proven to be a top four side this year. Um, are there any areas you can pinpoint that you think, oh, maybe if I'm better here or if we're better there as a team, we might get these chocolates. Like, how close really are you? Because it seems like it's just right there and you can't get it. Yeah, massively. Like, you mentioned the Norse game. That was absolutely heartbreaking. That's been our best game by far. Um, we started really well against them and we stayed in the game. I think, like you said, there's there's areas. We go really good for patches and then we just can't, um, I guess, sustain that for the full 80 minutes. I know it's cliche to say, but we're definitely a team that can't um, sustain that. Um, and Norse has been our closest to that. We'll go through patches, even like 15, 20 minute patches, and then we will just, I guess, drop our bundle a little bit and we'll let in not just one try, but a couple of tries. And that's that's been really costly for us. Um, and that's turned a few games into some really bad score lines. Um, but like you said, there's there's positives when we play teams like uh, Norse and Capra's that we did it, did um, I guess sustain it for a bit longer. So mate, we've seen you in the uh, in the Host Plus Cup since 2014. Now, you've been a while. You've been in the South Logan Magpies, Brisbane Tigers, Sunshine Coast Falcons. Um, but a little birdie told me you've never looked you, – you look a bit skinny, mate. Have you lost a bit of weight recently or um, just a bit skinnier than what we're used to seeing? I reckon I know what little birdie that is. <laughs> um, yeah, no, um, I guess, I don't know, different outlook. On the, I've actually been playing um, since 2010 in the – Q Cup. That was before all the stats and all that sort of <laughs> have come in. So that's how long I've been going. Um, but yeah, I, I guess, I don't know, just a new challenge. Um, I guess Crossy said like a potential for you to play dummy half um, this year. So I took that on and thought, oh, let, let's see how fit I can kind of get. Um, so maybe have dropped one or two kilos, just all the running over the preseason has dropped it off me. Yeah, the hookers are, you know, they they got a little bit more respect to the front rowers and the halves because they got to hang around us all the time and they're following the play. They got a little bit of respect in the middle there. So you're going all right. Now, um, <laughs> mate, you got a big game against the Blackhawks this weekend. Um, what's the vibe like being in the playing group? And uh, do we think this is the weekend you're going to crack them? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, mate, like I said, we're an optimistic um, bunch of guys. Um, yeah. They're young. They they always train hard. Um, they take like our, they take our losses hard and, and Crossy really does go through each of the things we are doing wrong. Um, so yeah, we'll look to train hard this week and improve on it. Um, things aren't optimal up here. Like all the, um, the fields are flooded up at Ipswich. So we're not allowed to actually train on the fields. Um, and that's been about two or three weeks now. So <laughs> we'll make do with what we got here um, at one of the schools, the local schools get on their courts and go through some things. But I guess, like, like we said, it's been you've been training all preseason, and it's we're into like a fair few rounds now. So there's no excuse. We should be able to um, pull off a good game this week. Yeah, well, the Blackhawks have had a bit of an up and down season, so that every chance you guys play your potential that you'll get the two points this weekend, uh, mate. You mentioned there's been widespread flooding uh, throughout Brisbane, but of course, Ipswich when it rains, it pours over there literally, yes. and you get you get the flooded fields. And uh, I know it's a community behind their club. Um, it had some success in 2015, and let's hope we get some more success this year and see how we go, eh? Thanks for your time, Reese. Appreciate it. Yeah, uh, they get their stuff together. The Jets, they were a young side. Uh, a win's not far away. You might be on the money. 
Yeah, I, th- I think I might be on the money this week, and uh, it was great to catch up with Reese and afforded the time just before training. So, yeah, I think uh, the Jets will get it done. All right, the uh, other games, uh, Falcons are going to cause more misery, I think, for the Pride. Ty Williams has got to do something up there. I know it's a home game, but the Falcons just got too many... Uh, too many feathers. Yeah, they're flying high at the moment, the Falcons, and looking really strong, uh, not only through their middle, but out wide as well. Uh, it's funny, I didn't predict the Falcons to be going this good mm. at this period of the season, but they are, so I think they will also get the job done against the Pride. Correct. Magpies, they need to restart and reload. Last year's semi-finalists need to get the win at Marsden Park. Uh, Marsden State High School, great venue. They'll get a big crowd up against the Seagulls, who were great defensively last week. Yeah, they were great defensively, the Seagulls, and uh, the Magpies, unfortunately, not being able to score any points last weekend. Seagulls didn't concede any points. I think this is a bit of a a concoction, a bit of a recipe for disaster for the Magpies, and I'm picking the Seagulls to get it done. Yeah, I'm going to go with you on that one, the Seagulls. Capra's up against the Bears. This is at home, the Capra's. uh, They're sitting in fourth spot. Um, This is McIndoe Park at Emerald. uh, It'll be a dry paddock up there. I think they might favour the Bears. Yeah, it will favour the Bears up through the middle. Um, but one thing you haven't factored in is the extra travel it's going to take for the Bears to get to Emerald as opposed to True. the Capras who don't have to travel mm. as far. Mm. More of a home game for the Capras. But more of a vibe out there with the BMD Premiership as well being played at the same venue, a real club feel. I think the Capras will get it done in front of a large home crowd. All right, see how we go. I'm going to go with the Bears in this one. Devils up against the Tigers. How good is this game of rugby league going to be? 2-10 is a KO9 now Q plus game. 2-10 p.m. Devils up against the Tigers. Mate, uh, this is going to be an absolutely awesome game of rugby league. Yeah, this game has always been a really big game of rugby league, the Devils v the Tigers. It's gotten increasingly better in the last couple of years. Of course, 2019, there was a semi-final played against each other. That was a, a yeah. blockbuster clash down at Bishop Park. I think this one's going to be just as good. You look at the halves, Darren Nichols, Jack Ahern, Jordan Green in the front row up against Jerome Veve and Sam Lavia. I, I think it's just there's matchups all across the park. Well, for mine, I actually like the bench. Alex McDonald uh, is on the lock, but William Samuel, Wesley Lolo, Jack Svensson, it's, it's a pretty good bench here. They might just be too good, I think, for, for North. So a little bit shaky with his new coaching uh, setup at the moment, with Ryan Smith playing for, uh, over with the Leeds Rhinos. I'm going to go for a Tigers win there. And look, Darius Pafama and Bennett Leslie, that thing looked just delicious on the screen there. That's why they're going to win. Yeah, look, I think so. I think the Tigers have got a very strong side. Um, but I'm going to go against you here. I think the Devils will get it done. I think that uh, – so their back line, really strong back line with Roberts yeah. and Ahern chiming in there. Uh, the return of Tony to Tamusa, uh, Broadhurst, Gagan. They've just got this superstar back line. Mm. And I actually fancy the Devils bench a little bit better. Liam Horn on that bench for the Devils has just made himself a super sub in the last couple of seasons, and I like him there. So I'm going to go with the Devils. All right. Well, um, that's it. Isn't it? Oh, no, we can't do that. We've got to go. Where's you, did you catch up with the fryer tuck? I did. <laughs> I caught up with our pommy mate Lee Addison mm. from rugbyleaguecoach.com.au and we had a chat about Ipswich. Mate, he has the blueprint. He has the blueprint for the Jets to follow to get the win over the Blackhawks. I've heard it. I'm back in the Jets in. So this is what Lee had to say. We're back with Lee Addison from rugbyleaguecoach.com.au to see his weekly analysis. And this week, we are taking aim at the Ipswich Jets. I wouldn't say taking aim. I think I'm going to hopefully help them overcome some of the obstacles they're going through. Hopefully. That sounds a bit like I'm, you know, some kind of agony aunt or something. Because they've had actually a, a tough season, haven't yeah. they? But I think there's, there's green shoots popping through. Look, what I will say straight away, I think they've got to put some points on early in every game. I'm going to show you some clips now because I've got clips of the Blackhawks defending as well as mm-hmm. as the Jets attacking and we're going to put it together so the viewer can see mm-hmm. the opportunities that, that the Jets might have this weekend. Beautiful. Well, we'll look at the producer, Kel, who will bring up all the video and uh, we'll take a really good look at what the Jets can do. So first of all, we're looking at the opponent. Look how compressed their defence is. So what would you do against that, Taylor? You'd have to shift early and uh, make sure they get the pack moving. Well, you don't even have to shift early. You could just do plus ones early. Yeah. You know, rather than just bunching up around the play the ball, rather than just going at this defence. Look how aggressive they are coming out in defence. Um, the opposition here, the Hunters, have made about 10 metres so far. <laughs> it's the third tackle. So if I'm coaching against the Blackhawks this weekend, I'm thinking, right, they're going to compress the defence early. They've got good line speed. I'm going to throw something different at them. Okay, so then once I've had a look at this, 
and looked at what opportunities there were in the Blackhawks defensive line. I then looked at the way the Jets were attacking. Now, devil's advocate, it's very wet, it's very muddy, okay? But I've also got some dry footage too. Now, what I think the Jets need to get away from, they seem to come alive on tackle three. If that's not a knock on, then I'll, I'll eat my shoes. But they seem to do nothing until tackle three sometimes, okay? I know that I might be generalizing there, but look how bunched up they are around the play the ball. So if you picture that against the Falcons defense, sorry, the Blackhawks defense that you've just seen, it's gonna be manna from heaven for the Blackhawks defense. They're just gonna crunch in. Third tackle, now they do a plus one. I'm even looking at the way that the, I think it's number nine there, went to the line. His hips weren't even square or anything like that. Now, so they've got to do a bit more coming out of exit. They've got to provide a bit more option to the play, whether it is an early shift or a plus one, better shape and attack. Now, let's go back to the Blackhawks and look at their defense when they are defending their own good ball. Same again, we've had a look at the Blackhawks before. They have good ABC defense, but as you'll notice, as you look at the Blackhawks defense, sometimes they get the numbers slightly wrong. Sometimes players have a little snooze and the other thing, their spacings open up a little bit. So I'd be looking this week, if I was the Jets coach, to, to have my players coming really hard onto the ball in these areas, doing plus ones earlier in the set. Or when, I, when you see me analyze the Jets attack, you'll see what I'll get them to do, which is shifting a little bit earlier. Also, the fact that they scored early here from a kick, the Hunters, shows to me that the kicking game of the Jets can really um, benefit from doing that as well, from kicking the ball early, and there's signs that they do that as well. And there's enough in this defence to show me that the Jets can have a real crack this weekend. Now, we flick it back to the Jets. Remember, I've already said that they are sort of a little bit three in and then they do something. And then it seems to be too many plus ones to me. Look at that shape there. I'd expect them to be in better shape. I'd expect them to be touch line to touch line. I'd expect their body language to be looking at the defensive line looking at spaces not faces they've gone three plays in they've gone a little bit across the field now i'd expect them to count numbers and they didn't do there kel can i just get you to rewind the tape a little bit there please sorry it's funny when you mention um before they have that kicking game lachlan cooper their half is just a sensational kicker yeah he's there the number seven he's got yeah. a really good kicking game um, notorious for it so i think that'll play right into his hands thanks kel that's perfect just go one more play and then when so if you can just go there kel play, press play now and then the next play just pause i'll tell you when about now that's clear to me that that working laterally that they do there what that has set up is an opportunity for them to attack back at that defence on the left side of the screen as we look. They look short of numbers to me. They're also not coming up in a line anymore because the Jets have worked horizontally across the field in three plays. And this is where I need. I think they need to stay alive. They need to be alive, off the ball, looking up, nominating numbers, nominating space, and going back a little bit to not the cavalier attitude they used to have under the old regime, but chancing their arm a little bit more. Roll it on, Kel, for me. And instead what they do is they go down the plus one-a-thon a little bit. Um, and to me, they're just running into a defence that's waiting for them there. Yeah. So I'm prescribing for the Jets this week a little bit more enterprise. They've got to score points early. Look, another, another plus one. And it's just going back into the same corridor all the time. Now, I think they're two plays behind here. They should have shifted the ball to the left. Now, again, I'm going to devil's advocate. It's a, it's a wet, damp, horrible field. Um, we've got a couple of more kit clips that back this up. Um, there's no shortage of effort and endeavour in the way they're running onto the football. The lack of endeavour endeavor and effort for me is off the ball. I think they need to do a little bit more. Look at all their eyes. They're all looking at the play of the ball. I'd be, if you just pause the tape there again, Kel, Look at the winning numbers. Mm. Look at what they've done to the defence. They're so thin on that right-hand side too. Like there's a, yeah. good, there's a good eight metres in between those uh, B and C defenders. <laughs> so the left of the screen as we look at it, if, mm. if, if the viewer can imagine, the left side of Ipswich Jets in good shape, touchline to touchline, um, looking up, uh, fancying themselves looking at holes. 
Is that not opportunity galore there Absolutely. to at least get a good play of the ball? Cheers, Kel. I can just see those players pouring into those holes and getting some results. And it, cheers, Kel. And I guess what they've what they've done for me a little bit is the the Jets when they were successful were a real, if you like, a horizontal team. They played that contract football where they almost didn't ever settle. Yeah. I think at times here they've gone a bit too a little bit too basic. I think just some emphasis on. Um, being comfortable, passing the ball around, moving it around the field. Here's another set where they're a little bit more expansive. Again, the caveat, the devil's advocate, it's so wet, they probably did have to shorten the passing up. What I've done is I've pulled some clips out of them on a dry track in yeah. a minute to prove that, to prove that it, it's something they probably need to address. Um, that run was lacking a little bit of direction, I think. And I think... Again, just look at the Wynnum numbering up there. Surely there's opportunities to go plus two, hit some holes. Even Taylor Brown could score a try against that defence lot. <laughs> well, um, as you mentioned, the Townsville Blackhawks, they are a nice tight side. They do that yeah. when they're coming up and they're attacking in defence. They're really in that, that 20 metre line. So if that early shift, there's definitely going to be opportunities on the edge yeah. uh, to take advantage of. And they have the side. Tyler Coburn, really experienced, really good uh, outside back there, 21, 22 years old. He's going to be great. Uh, they're shifting early and getting the ball where it needs to be. And look, you can shift. It doesn't mean that you don't have to complete your set. You can shift sensibly, get nice and deep, move the ball a little bit, change the point of attack, get the opposition on the back foot, um, get a quick play of the ball, settle in again, tie them up, then shift back the other way. Just keep them guessing and then 10 or 15 minutes in, change it back to this. But hopefully by that time, you've got a couple of points on the board. I think if Jets are going to start winning some games, they need to shock teams early. Yeah. The, you know, the Blackhawks are coming from Townsville this weekend. It's a couple of hours on the yeah. plane. Um, Flying's never good for the rugby league player, no. especially on the day of the game. Um, get them early in the first 10 minutes, and then once you get a couple of points, you get confident and confident, just keep completing, yeah. and then just ch keep changing phases, phases and attack. Um, this is just to show the viewer that even on a dry track, they're probably, they've probably got some more expansion in them. There's not much more to show, just two more clips of this sort of three in, and then they go into a little bit of front man football all the time I'd rather them go wide first and then play front man later you know open the defence up get up. them guessing get them on the back foot and then there's enough here I mean mm. I, I know there's some inexperience in this team I know that the coach was appointed late I know the squad was formed late but I'm telling you now there are some wins in this team if they can if they can just chance themselves a little bit look the season there's a kick just backing up what I said earlier yeah. as well about the, the early kick early against kick. The, the Black Hawks. If they can back themselves, the season's going into a phase where they probably realise they might not play finals football. Yeah. It's getting close to that point now. So now they probably need to chance their arm a little bit. It doesn't have to be too risky. You can just shift the ball, still focus on completion, 10 or 15 minutes, move the ball, get the defence on the back foot, get them second guessing their system, and then when they're on the back foot, then you play through them, just keep them guessing. And I'm back in a Jets ambush this weekend. Back Jets ambush, and so am I. After hearing your words, Lee, you've got me convinced as well. Jets by 50. <laughs> <laughs> no, 48. 48, right. Thanks, Lee. RugbyLeagueCoach.com.au if you want any of his expertise and some advice or opinions on your footy side or your coaching ability. And other than that, we'll see you next week. Take care. Well, there you go. Lex Luthor, the most devious criminal mind man has known, Lee Addison, talking about the Jets getting the job done. You, you believe him? I believe him. I'm, Lee Addison's one of the smartest coaches I've ever played underneath, and I think he would have come up to come up with something to beat the Blackhawks. He hasn't had much time studying that tapes, but he just picks things up naturally, and I think his blueprint, I back it in. Well, he's actually our Tom Cruise, is Lee Addison, and we look forward to seeing him in, uh, in his, uh, his uh, what do you call it, flight jacket. No, I don't know what you call it because this is all you. This no. is all you, John Devine. Well, I'm telling this you, is I, nothing. <laughs> he is. He is the Ice Man. We'll be back next week. Queensland League scene. Enjoy your company.